Welcome back, Faith Warriors. Faith Warrior Brother checking in with you. We're about to get ready to get right back into our lesson, which is titled, How to Identify Ourselves with Jesus Christ. Now, it's been a good two weeks. We've been going over these things, how to identify ourselves with Christ, and we want to pick right back up where we left off. Um, point number eight, by constant prayer and study of the Word of God. It was more I needed to put on here by around the room. So it's supposed to be by constant prayer and study of the Word of God and loving God and loving people. Okay? So let's get right into it. Prayer is our humble communication to God. So when we come to God, we need to be humble, have a spirit of meekness when we uh, or humility uh, when we come before God. We don't come to God with our chest all poked off, but we come but we come before a holy and living and true God with humility and humbleness, okay? So prayer is our humble communication to God for strength, because we do need strength. Our strength that we have is def it's, it's just not enough. It's not enough. We need God's strength because his strength is more powerful than any tribulation and trials you can go through, okay? So we communicate to God for strength, for breakthroughs, and guidance, okay? Prayer is offering up our desires for needful things and things we want that are promised by God. So we pray to God for things that are needful and desires and things that we want that is in the will of God. Okay? Prayer is seeking help from God in matters that are beyond our power. So prayer <laughs> is seeking God, especially in situations that you know that you need help in, that you know that you will not be able to get out of unless God help you. When we pray to God, it is our ultimate lifeline to him, our ultimate communication to him. That's why the Bible tells us to cast our cares on him, for he cares for us. When we cast, when we pray to God, we are casting our cares upon him. We are giving him our worries, our concerns, our tribulations. We're asking God to be there with us in our troubles, and he will. Okay? So prayer is seeking help from God in matters that we are that are beyond our power, having the confidence that God will come through. You see that? So when we pray to God, we got to have faith and believe that he will come through. That's why the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. We got to believe that he is, and he is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. So if you are diligently seeking God, he will come through for you in your tribulations, in your trials, whatever it may be, he will come through for you, okay? Along with praying, there should be constant meditation in the word of God and a cheerful obedience to follow it. So we need to meditate upon God's word. Med meditation means to have deep thought, deep thought. Okay, so you take so so when you take a scripture for for example, let's use a scripture. Say you read it in the book of Psalms, right? And then when you and you you get to the forty second chapter when it says, "As the deer is thirsty for the water, so uh, does my thought, my soul thirst for you." You take that and you meditate upon that. You take deep thought about your your desire to want to learn God and want to be with God. Whether you go into the closet or whether you go into a quiet place, so that you can focus on those on that scripture right there of thirsting for God's word. You meditating upon that. You thirsty. You thirsty. You thirsty. You desire God. You want to be more with God. That's what meditating is. Taking deep thought, but you want to get to a quiet place so where you can so there won't be no distractions. Okay. It is by meditation and study and study that we learn the truth and spiritual guidance of God. You see, men and women are required to study. So let's go to the book of Saint. I mean, sorry. Let's go to the book of Second Timothy. I was about to say Saint Matthew's. I'm telling you, as you get older, man, you forget stuff. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, Second Timothy. This Bible is huge, man. Wow. It's a large print Bible, so it's very, very big. All right? So we, this, is the, this is the King James Version, just so you know. So you want to get your Bibles, you can follow along. I'm telling you, when I be trying to find these scriptures, I be wanting to do the Jeopardy music. Y'all know the Jeopardy theme song. <laughs> I be wanting to do it sometime because I be trying to find these scriptures. All right. So 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter. And a 15th verse. And it says, 
Study to show thyself approved unto God. See, God wants us to study his word because when we study his word, we are learning of God. We know what God wants from us. We know who he is. We know what he desires. We know how he wants us to live, right? We know about his love by studying. So it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God wants us to study his word so that we can know him and so that we can rightly divide the word of truth so we can share the gospel with others. God wants you to learn of him. Learn his word, study his word, spend time with God. I know we all got our favorite TV shows, I understand, and I get that, right? But sometimes we got to set that stuff aside and spend time with God in his word so he can speak to us. Remember, when we pray to God, we speaking to him. When we read in his word, he's speaking to us. Let's get in his word so he can talk to us and, and nourish us and cultivate us and develop us. In him. Daily we should be striving to be more like Jesus. Okay? We also are to search the scriptures. Okay? Let's go to St. John's. Let's see what Jesus said. Oh, I love Jesus. I love when Jesus talk. Jesus is amazing. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, he's wonderful. All right. Let's see what he's... Let's see what Jesus said. Okay? Remember, Jesus... <laughs> Jesus' life was amazing. But may I tell you, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he got on their nerves. Jesus taught the truth, and they didn't want to hear it. And now, listen to what he's about to say. He says, search the scripture. See, so Jesus wants us to search the scripture. Even though he was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, you know, and, and, and the religious rulers at this time, right? He wants us to search the scriptures. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And, and they are they which testify of me. The scriptures of God testifies of Jesus. The word of God testifies of Jesus. All throughout the Bible, you've seen prophecies of, about Jesus on when he was going to come. And everything, his first event and everything when he first was, you know, a woman shall be with child, right? Unto us a son is born. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, unto us a son is born, unto us a son is given. I probably didn't say it right, but you know what I'm talking about. Unto us a child is born, sorry, and the son is given. That was prophesied way back in Isaiah. Search the scripture. The scriptures testify of Jesus. So if you search in the scriptures, you will know that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is king of kings and lord of lords, that he is a sacrifice for all sins. Search the scriptures because in the scriptures you find out who Jesus is and in Jesus is eternal life. In them you have eternal life. In Jesus you have eternal life. Search the scriptures. So study the scriptures and search the scriptures. Okay? We are to continue in and know the truth. Let's go to St. John's. Still in the book of St. John. All right, St. John's chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. We got to continue in the word of God, not just say, oh, I believe you, you, you confess your sins, you believe in Jesus for a short while, and then you go back to your old life and still think you're okay. No, Jesus said you have to continue in him. And it says this. Let's see. All right. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Listen what the word of God said. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, this is plain and simple stuff right here. We as humans, we make stuff difficult. You have to continue in God's word to be a part of God. It's that, it's point blank period. It ain't no one saved, always saved. It's just not, I'm sorry. You have to continue. If Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So we have to continue in God's word if we are going to be a disciple of God, a follower of God. We have to continue in the words of Jesus. 
And then he said, by you continuing in, in him, you will know the truth. And that truth will set you free. Set you free from what? Set you free from your sins, the bondage of sin, the slaveries of sin, the, 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 the power of sin. Under the power of God. And so, so look, when you have been set free from your sins, you have been set free from the powers of the spirit and nature of the devil. You are no longer controlled by that spirit. You have been set free from that spirit. And now you are now you are in one with Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God leads and guides you into all truth because you have been set free. Because you know the truth which sets free, which is Jesus Christ. Because you are continuing in him and you are his disciple. Therefore, you follow him. Know the truth. Continue in the truth. Okay, let's go to and, and you and we also are required to obey it. This is Bible. These are the words of Jesus himself. Jesus saying that we have to obey, then we have to obey. You got a lot of people out there that says, oh, this is work salvation. This is work salvation. No, it is not. When you say that you have faith in Jesus Christ, your life should reflect the faith that you confess in. Your life should be reflecting the faith that you are confessing. Let's see what Jesus say. St. John. Still in the St. John, because Jesus himself is talking. If you're going if you, if you to complain, you're complaining at the wrong person. Jesus is saying that. He is the word of God. We believe what Jesus say, not what men say. I don't care if, the, if this person got a New York, uh, New York Times best-selling book. That's saying otherwise. You don't believe in the New York Times best-selling book. You believe in the word of God, Jesus. All right. St. John's chapter 14, verse 23 and 24. Look at, look at what Jesus said. Oh, my goodness. Look what he said. Jesus answered and said unto him, okay, if a man love me, he will keep my words. See, the word keep, keep means to retain. When you keeping something, you are retaining it in your possession. So he, Jesus said, if a man love me, so Jesus said, if you really say that you love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our bold with him. So Jesus said, if you keep my words, me, him, him and his father will be one with you, will make their abode in you. They will abide within you if you keep his words. But look what he said in verse 24. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sins. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's whom sent me. So if you're not keeping Jesus Christ's words, he, you don't really love God. You can say that you love God all that you want, but if you're not following Jesus, you're not keeping his word, he said that you don't really love him. You don't love him. He even says in the book of, in the same book, in, in, the, in the book of St. John, and I'm going to go right to it. He says, it's in, it's in the 15th chapter. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You see that? If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my word. Jesus saying, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. So we have to obey God. We have to obey him. Your faith that you confess in, it will show in the way that you live. This is the word of God. This is not work salvation. This is Bible teaching. God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. That's what he said. We have to listen to what God said, not what man is saying. Man can't save you. Jesus is the only one that can save you. Okay? Let's go to Acts 5 and 32. And we're moving right along in here. Jesus is my true love. He is my true love. Jesus is. Let's see what Acts 5 32 say. And we are his witnesses of these things. This is Peter talking here. Okay? Remember, Peter, he witnessed Jesus Christ's um, death, his burial, his resurrection. Jesus Christ, Peter seen Jesus Christ. He walked with Jesus Christ. So what he's saying is very credible. 
And he said, where are witnesses of these things? So is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. So right here, we're saying that the Holy Ghost is given to those who obey him. The Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit, which Jesus Christ will baptize you in when you get saved. The Holy Spirit comes in and empowers you to do the works of God, do the, the, you know, to follow God. Because it is the Spirit of God that leads you and guides you into all truth. That's why Jesus said, when I go, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send you a comforter and he will lead you. When we get saved, we got the Spirit of God in us. Acts 5.32 is, is really clear. Whom God has given to them that obey him. We have to obey God if we want the Holy Spirit. We have to obey. It's plain. Let's go to Romans 1 and 5. We have to obey God's word, peoples. Faithful heirs. You got to obey God's word. You can't be out there just, just li living a tacky life. Not a tacky life. can't be out there tacky for God. I'm not talking about clothing. I'm talking about the way that you're living. You can't be living a tacky life for God. You got to be meat for God. Holy living. If you sin and transgress against God, ask, repent of your sins, right? Turn from your sins, change a new, walk a new direction, and follow God. I know we sin against, I know, I know we make mistakes. I understand that. I get it, right? But you got to stop sinning once you repent and turn from God. That sin that you fall into, you got to turn from it. Stop putting yourself in situations that, that's going to cause you to sin against God. You have to be wise. You got to be wise in this world. Use the wisdom that God has given you. Stop thinking that you all let and think you can do what you want to do. You can't do what you want to do. You have to follow God's word. His word has to be your guide in this world. Man. All righty. Romans 1 and 5. And it says, by whom we have received grace, we have received grace through Jesus Christ, basically what it's saying. By whom we have received grace and apostleship, apostleship, apostles, apostles is, a, is, is one that is delegated with full power, acting in the place of another. The sender backing up the one sent. So the apostles were delegated by Jesus Christ, right, to do his will. Jesus Christ empowered them to do his will. That's what an apostle is. One delegated in full power to act in the place of another. The sender remaining behind, backing up the one sent. Disciples, followers of Jesus Christ, when they out there teaching and doing God's will, they are empowered by God from heaven and they are doing his God's bidding upon the earth. That's what the disciples did. That's what the apostles did. Or the apostles. That's what they did. Okay? So we have received apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. See, we have to be obedience to the faith. You see the theme here? Obedience. So we are to study. We are to search the word. We are to continue in and know the truth. And we are to obey it. Okay. And we are to meditate day and night in it. Let's go to Psalms. The book of Psalms. He's my Savior. He's my Savior. He's my Savior. Jesus Christ. He's my Savior. He's my Savior. Oh, I love to praise his holy name because he is worthy of it. He is my Savior. All right, Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So blessed is the man, right, that is not listening to evil counsel of wicked men, Right? Nor standing in the way of sinners, you hanging out, um, you acting like you know, you're doing things of sin with the people that is ungodly and all these different things. Okay, look, it's it's different when you 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 with the sinner people, but you're trying to help them get saved. You, like like with Jesus Christ, right? Jesus ate with publicans and sinners, right? But his mission was to what teach them about salvation, because the kingdom of heaven was at hand. 
Jesus taught them about that. He taught them about repentance and stuff like that. So make sure that if you're hanging out, make sure that you have a, a mission to try to speak the word of God to them. We don't hang with our ungodly friends just to be out there to do the sinful things that they're doing. Because you got to be careful with that. Once again, that don't mean that we think we better. Because that's not the right attitude to have. You think you better in people. That's not cool. That's not the way of Jesus. You have to love people and care about people. Okay? But blessed is those that walk not in the counsel of ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Those that, look, you're not agreeing with people that are slandering other people. To scorn means to slander. To cause harm with your words. Okay? We don't do that as believers. All right, we don't mock people, okay, as believers. But it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. So the Bible wants us to meditate upon God's word. Meditate upon God's word. Have deep sessions with God. Talk to God when you're meditating upon his word. Ask God to help you understand that, what you just read. Ask God. Meditate upon his word. Let's go to Joshua. Are we all in this book today? We all over it. And for you that don't know where Joshua is, <laughs> you don't know where Joshua is, it's right after Deuteronomy. Or you can always go to your, uh, you know, your table of contents in the beginning of your Bibles and it'll show you where it's at. I'm just trying to make y'all smile. You gotta have some kind of humor, right? As long as it's good, clean humor. All right. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 through 8. I've been talking so much, and I ain't even got to the scripture yet. All right. Here we go. Only be thou strong and very courageous. This is this is God talking here, okay? So only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Now, obviously, y'all know that we're not under the law no more, but you, you could do it. the same principles uh, can apply, okay? Turn not from it to thy right hand or to thy left, that thou mayest prosper wherever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of, thy, out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So obviously y'all know that we are not up under the law, right? But we can meditate upon God's word for the new covenant, the new testament. Meditate upon God's word for your life. Take time with God. Spend time with prayer in God and on his word. Meditate upon it, okay? All righty. Faith is increased by obedience, prayer, and study of the word of God. Let's go to the book of Romans. Okay. It's the word of God that saves us. These scriptures has life in them. All right. Here we go. Romans 10 and 17. And it says, So then faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. See, when you hear God's word and you believe upon God's word, your faith is increasing. And our faith is increased by hearing the word of the most high God. If you want your faith to increase, spend time in God's word and you will be able to see all of the miracles that God did in the Bible. All of the blessings that he did. And that will build your faith up. When you seen that the walls of Jericho fell because they marched around the walls and the, and the walls of Jericho fell and God delivered them, right? That'll build your faith up. When you see how, how God led Israel through the Red Sea by the hands of Moses, when you see that he brought them through that, that will build your faith up. Your faith will increase because you know that if God did that for them, he would do it for you. Your faith will be strong. Hear God's word by being in his word. Okay? Now, 
Like I told you, I didn't have enough room to write the other part to number eight. But it's loving God and loving people. So let's go to the book of uh, 1 John. 1 John. 1 John is after Peter. And so you know, this Bible page is so big. It's good for reading, though. All right. So, 1 John, chapter 3, verse 11. Okay? But this is the message that you have from the beginning, that we should love one another. So we identify ourselves with Jesus Christ by loving one another. Remember, Jesus was the ultimate example of love. He loved it us. He cared for us. He came and died for our sins. He, had, he, he loved his enemies. The Bible tells us to love his enemies. Jesus Christ showed that in action. He loved his enemies. He loved it us. Why, why were we his enemies? Because we violated God's word. We was in total rebellion against God. But Jesus Christ came to reconcile us back to God by the sacrifice of his life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is a message you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, remember Cain and Abel, who was, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. He murdered his brother. Where, and, why did he, and why did he murder him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Then he goes on to say, marvel not, my brother, if the world hates you. So just like Cain was, was hating on his brother Abel when he killed him, you understand that the world is going to hate you too. Right? Everybody in this world not going to like you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. So we know that we pass from death unto life, meaning that we know that we are no longer spiritually dead, but we are alive in God when we love our brother. Right? That's what it says. He that loveth not his brother abides in death. So you are still dead in your sins if you do not love your brother. When we identify ourselves with Jesus Christ, we love like he loved. We strive to love like we love. If we, have, if we struggle in that area, then we make an effort to get to that point. When it's, when it's an opportunity for you to love, you show that love. Love your enemies. That's important. If you treat your enemies with love and compassion, a sense of shame will come upon them. Because they, they, they're going to be like, why is he being so kind and nice to me and I treat him so wrong? They will end up coming back to you apologizing. That happened to me a couple of times. And it can be the same way for you, Faith Warrior. Don't abide in death by having hatred in your heart for your brethren. Whoever, whosoever hated this brother is a murderer. That's the Bible says you are a murderer if you hate your brother. Okay? And ye know no murderers have eternal life abided in him. So if you don't like, if you hate your brother, you are in sin. And you don't have eternal life abiding within you. And if you die in your sins, you're going to be eternally separated from God. So if you're a person that hates your brother right now, or your sisters, or anybody, our neighbors is everybody. You know, it ain't just those that are in the church, right? It ain't just the body of Christ. Our neighbor is everybody. So if you hate your brothers or your sisters in this world, now talk about your natural brothers and sisters. They are included in this too. I'm talking about in general. If you hate people in general, now is the time for you to repent and ask God to forgive you of your sins and change and walk in a new direction. Have a new attitude and mindset about how you should love people. Okay, repent before you die in that sin because you die in that sin, you're doomed. I'm telling you, you are doomed. It says it. No murder has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So we need to lay down our life for the brethren. Like Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. We got to be sacrificial and give our life for everybody else. That don't mean that you die on the cross like Jesus. But that means you make an effort to help people when you can. That's why the next verse it says, But whoso has this world's good and sees his brother have need and shut up his bowels of compassion for him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? If you have the provision, the, um, the necessities to be able to help somebody, do what you can to help somebody. Don't close your fist when you have power to help. Remember, the things that you have, the blessings that you have, they are from God. 
So take what God has given you to help those that are in need. Jesus was unselfish in what he did. Everything Jesus did was unselfish. He wasn't selfish. He was, it wasn't all about him, him. It was all about serving. Jesus was a servant. Even though he should have been the one that was being served, he was serving. And we have to have that same mindset to help people what we can. Tell people about the word of God. If God opened up opportunity to be able to do that. Sometimes people just need you just to be there for they can cry on your shoulders. It's all kind of things, ways that you can help people. It don't always have to be monetary. It could be just your presence. Your presence can be effective. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Let us not just love when we say with our lips, but let us love in deed and in truth. Let our actions speak louder than our words. What you do speak so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. That's what I'm talking about. Action speaks louder than words because what you're doing is deafening because your actions are speaking so loudly. Love people. That's how we identify ourselves with Jesus Christ. Let's go to the last scripture in this lesson. Now, let's jump over to the fourth chapter. Okay? The fourth chapter, starting at verse 7. 1 John 4 and 7. And it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and know of God. So if you truly love God, you are of God and you are born of God. It's self-explanatory. He that loveth not, but he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So if you don't love according to how the Bible says that you love, you are not of God. You are of the you are of the devil, the father of lies, the deceiver, him. If you don't love according to how the scriptures say you are supposed to love, we're supposed to love. Read the Bible. That's why the Bible tells us to search the scriptures because when we are searching the scriptures and when we are studying the scriptures, it teaches us how we are supposed to love in this sinful and adulterated world. Okay? So he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Agape love, okay? To care for somebody. Divine love, to care. Jesus Christ cared so much, he seen his creation in shambles and in sin, and he came to be the sacrifice for that sin. That's some love. He was in all of his glory before he came down. In all of his glory. And he took on the form of a servant to come down and die for our sins. That's love in action. Verse 9. And this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. See? So we live through God. We live through Jesus Christ. We live through Jesus. Our life that we live, we are living through Jesus. Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit is living through us. As we submit and yield ourselves to him. Oh, yeah. We live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God. It ain't, it ain't because we love God that God did it, but God loved us. Herein is the love, that, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for sin. So the word propitiation means Christ was the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Okay? Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Identifying ourselves with Jesus Christ, we love one another. Jesus even said many times that he loved the Father. If you go to the St. John's, the 17th chapter, when Jesus Christ is praying to the Father, you see throughout that prayer, Jesus saying, I love, I, I how much he loved the Father. He even said the Father loved him. You see? So we ought to love one another. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. So no man has seen God in his fullness at any time. Okay? If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. So if we are loving one another like the Bible says, God's love is perfected in us because we are doing what the word of God said. We are loving how the word of God said we are supposed to love. Hereby know we that we dwell in him. So this is how we know that we dwell in him and he in us. 
because he has given us his spirit. So those that are believers of God, God has given you his spirit, which is proof that you belong to God by you having his spirit. Because remember, in the book of Romans, in the eighth chapter, somewhere in there, it says those that have not the spirit don't belong to God. But since you have the spirit, you belong to God. And we have seen and do testify, remember John, right? The, you know, beloved of Jesus, right? He walked with Jesus. He talked with Jesus. He ate with Jesus. So what he's saying is credible. That's why he says, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. When you confess, you have to sincerely confess and admit your sins, right? And, and, and confess and believe that Jesus Christ, but not only is believe in Jesus Christ, but when you really, but you have to truly believe in Jesus Christ. Just because you believe in a historical fact that he is, is the son of God, that don't make you saved. When you confess that Jesus is the son of God, you got to confess with your mouth, but you also got to believe with your heart. But the Bible said with confession, right? Well, like when you confession, you confess the salvation. Right? Your heart believeth unto salvation. With your mouth you confess he is the Son of God. With your heart you are believing unto salvation. When you believe with your heart, a change will take place in your life. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So if you are dwelling in God's love, he is dwelling in you. And because of that, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So look, by us having perfect love in Jesus Christ, because we love him like the Bible says, we can have boldness, meaning we, we, we won't have to worry about having that fear of knowing, uh, of thinking that we're going to be condemned. Okay? Because as he is, so are we in this world. So this is so this is proof right here that we can live a holy life, not living in sin. Because it says, as he is, so are we in this world. And we know how God is. God is holy. He's true, right? So we can be holy in this world just like God is. A lot of people don't want to hear that, though. They say that we sin every day. You don't have to sin every day. That's because you tempted you don't have to yield to what has been presented unto you. You need to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. When you are tempted, rebuke it. Don't entertain it. Because when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. You need to resist the devil and he will flee from you. There is no fear in love. See, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear has torment. Look, fear is torment. Fear means false evidence appearing real, okay? You don't have to worry about being condemned when you are following God. Satan is going to try to manipulate you. He's going to try to make you think that God is not with you, but God is with you, especially if you are following Jesus and you are loving God. God is with you, faith warrior. He is with you. He adores you. He cares about you, and he wants you to know that victory is yours through his son, Jesus Christ. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. See, if you fearing, something is wrong. Because, remember, perfect love casts off fear. So if you are fearing, that means you got some guilt in you that is, that is condemning you, then you got some stuff you need to work on. Remember, you need to be ready and not be getting ready when Christ is in the air. You need to already be ready. So whatever it is that's causing you guilt or fear, Whatever is condemning you, whatever is convicting you, go to God with it and ask God for forgiveness and get back on that path of righteousness. Now is your time. If you're a person that feels guilt and shame and the spirit of God is convicting you, that means that it's something in your life that you need to fix. And you only can go to, you need to take that problem to Jesus so he can help you get rid of that problem so you don't have to have that fear of judgment. Remember, perfect love cast off fear. Okay? We love him because he first loved us. If any man say, I love God, hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this is the commandment we have from him, that we love God, 
that he who loved God loved his brother also. So we have to love God and our brother. We have to. It's important. That is what God's word said. If you don't love your brethren, you are a liar. You say you know God, but you don't love your brother. The Bible says you are a liar. How can you say you love your brother who you see every day, but you ain't never seen God, you say you love him? That's what the Bible just said. So, faith warriors, appreciate y'all tuning in to all these videos on how to identify ourselves um, with Jesus Christ. Um, today is New Year's Eve, so I will say please be safe, be responsible out there. There's going to be a lot of craziness going on out there, a lot of sin, sinful stuff going on out there. Um, I advise you to just pray, read your Bible, praise God. Praise the Lord. If you want to go out and eat dinner with your family, that's a great idea. You know, do that, spend time with the family and stuff like that. But remember, guard your hearts, guard your mind, guard your soul. All right? Um, I'm going to check back in with y'all again sometime next week. We're going to have a whole new lesson. A whole new lesson. It's going to be a surprise lesson. I'm going to introduce it next week, Lord willing. But until next time, Faith Warriors, I love y'all with all my heart. With all my soul, with all my mind. Um, whatever goals and plans you have for a new year, take it to God. Put God in it. Let God be the center of it. If you don't know God, now is the time for you to repent and turn to God and have a new walk in 2022. Repent. Confess. Believe in your heart that God rose Jesus Christ from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. But you got to stop sinning. You can't repent and still stay in your sin. Change your life. Change your ways by Jesus Christ. If we confess our sins, the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, will cleanse us from our sins and from all unrighteousness. we got to do what the Bible says if we want salvation. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. For you that is unsaved, he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Come to Jesus. Serve Jesus Please, not this world. This world going to pass away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God, they shall abide forever. Don't you want to abide forever? Don't you want to see Jesus in peace? Now is the time to get your life together. This is the last day of 2021. It will never be another day in 2021 again after today. Tomorrow is a new year. Make a new, make a new goal for your life to love and serve God and to know who he is. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, bless each and every one listening on today, Lord. Bless them, Lord God. Give them wisdom. Give them understanding of your word. Lead them and guide them unto your truth. Continually create them a clean heart and renew the right spirit within them, Lord God. Please, Lord God. We are going to be going into a new year, my Lord. Bless them in this new year. Increase them in this new year. Give them power to resist the devil at all points in this new year. Whatever situation that they are going through, Lord God, be with them in their troubles, Lord. Be our comfort. Be our strength. Be our refuge and our fortress, Lord God. Oh, be a lamp to our feet and a light unto our pathway, Lord God. Oh, God, we pray unto you right now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray unto you. In your son, Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Thank God. Until next time, faith warriors. Let us continue to fight the good fight of faith and let us lay hold on to eternal life. Jesus forever. Bye-bye. Love y'all. Bye. -bye. Bye.